Oh, scientists in Singapore have come up with a new type of therapy to combat antibiotic resistance in a type of bacteria that causes chronic lung-related infections. Oh, this method uses a combination of two types of antibiotics and it's now on the way to human clinical trials. And to share more, we have with us in the studio Dr. Go Bun Chong. He's principal research scientist at the Singapore MIT Alliance for Research and Technology Center. Welcome and thank you for joining us, uh, Doctor. First of all, uh, this proposed therapy, uh, how does it differ from existing treatment plans? Yeah, so thanks, thanks Don, and thanks Wei Su. Um, so let's talk about mycobacterium abscesses a little bit. So it's a family of non-tuberculosis mycobacteria. So what makes this bacteria so difficult to treat is that it's naturally resistant to a lot of antibiotics. And chytromycin is the frontline antibiotics that um, a lot of doctors will prescribe. But however, the problem is that there's an increasing number of cases where doctors see that chytromycin is, is not really working well because they have gained the resistance. So for those cases, there is no good way to um, treat that infection. So uh, interestingly, a couple of years ago um, at SMART, we organized a local AMR symposium. So uh, during the Q&A session, a infectious disease clinician actually came up and grabbed the mic and said that uh, we are seeing more and more cases of uh, non-tuberculosis mycobacterial infection that we are having a hard time to treat and we need new therapy against mycobacterial uh, mycobacteria abscesses. So we uh, set out this project with a clear goal in mind, so is to find a potent combination um, to treat chytromycin resistant mycobacterial abscesses. Right? So um, we uh, that, that's what differs us from the other approaches. So we um, tested um, over 2,000 compounds and in combination with chytromycin against chytromycin resistant mycobacterial mm. abscesses. And we found that rifaximin is the, the top candidate that synergizes well with chytromycin. So and, this mm. is interesting because mm. generally you think the whole the issue of antibiotic resistance is you take one an antibiotic and so many of us become resistant to it. Mm. Now you add another one. In principle, now you could, in principle, become resistant to two types of antibiotics. But what rifaximin does, as you say, it's a synergy. Mm. It does something different from just adding any other antibiotic. What effect would that be? Yes, uh, so rifaximin and calatromycin, they belong to two different classes of antibiotics. So not exactly. So no, you don't have to worry about it too much because it's quite unlikely to develop and to encourage resistance uh, of uh, encourage antibiotic resistance if you mm. use two or more antibiotics. Right. In fact, if you are infected by bacterial infections, we need and we should take antibiotics. Mm. And the problem with antibiotic resistance is that we use it for non-bacterial infections like flu, which is usually caused by viruses, or just use antibiotics as a growth promoter for uh, livestock. So that kind of encourage that's like the main driver of antibiotic resistance. Tell us more about that, though, because we, this is what we always hear from our mm. doctors, right? Uh, we don't want to sort of worsen this issue of antibiotic resistance because of the use of or overuse of antibiotics when we don't need to. So uh, put into context just how bad that situation is. Uh, so according to a, a landmark um, report that's published in Lancet, so over 1.2 million people died every year. Um, that can be directly attributed to antibiotic resistance. And if this problem is left unchecked, that number will balloon to 10 million deaths by the year of 2050. And Asia is actually uh, contributing to almost half of it. Right? And in Singapore Hospital, uh, we are hearing more and more cases where um, multidrug resistance bacteria, uh, it's very difficult to treat. Sometimes you can throw over 10 different types of antibiotics and still can't, can't treat it. So, um, to me, I think that um, to use antibiotics as it's supposed to be used, then it will dramatically reduce the challenge of mm. antibiotic resistance. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, antibiotics as they should be used, but now with this breakthrough where you have mm. found after testing 2,000 compounds, mm. rifaximin works, in fact, a word from your study as a potentiator, it restores the efficacy mm. of clarithromycin. Yes. Can we apply this kind of model to any other combination of antibiotics so that with something else from a different school, we, in a way, kickstart again the efficacy of the original antibiotic? Is, has this got a, a further use in other types of infections? 
Yes, in our study, in fact, shows that um, by choosing the right combination of drugs, we can restore the efficacy of the frontline antibiotics. So we can, yeah, we can really, um, like it serves as a blueprint for other uh, therapy, for other groups to try to use this method as well. Mm. Mm. The method as it stands, uh, Doctor, I mean, do you intend, does it need any refinement at all? I mean, you've done your, your rigorous studies mm. and so on, but what further sort of investigations are you going to be doing into it? Yeah, so, so far we have tested um, the combination in vitro, which is in the lab. We also tested um, that in, in the zebrafish model, which is through our collaborators at the Nanyang Technological University. Um, we have since expanded the team to uh, include um, Professor Mary Chen, uh, Professor Kevin Pat from uh, Nanyang Technological University. We also have a clinician from Tan Tong Sik Hospital, Dr. Albert Lin, who is on board. So we will formulate, um, now it's down to the formulation, so we will formulate the combination of drugs such that it can reach the deepest part of the lungs and we'll test it on a mouse, uh, mouse lung infection model. And we're also collaborating with a commercial manufacturing partner to, to make the inhalation device and formulation that's needed for the um, human clinical trials right. eventually. Oh, thanks, Dr. Mm. Goh Boon Chong, for explaining all this to us and coming in as well to the studio this evening. As Dr. Goh Boon Chong, he's a principal research scientist behind this study at the Singapore MIT Alliance for Research and Technology Centre. Thank you. Mm. My pleasure.